after you showed this ray tracer in your capstone, you then showed some other ray traced images you did. Go on, you show those to us now. Yeah, let's pull those up here. Let's get rid of this uh, ray tracer here. So at Newmont, we actually don't teach ray tracing in any specific course. We teach rasterization, which is uh, like OpenGL and DirectX stuff. But Ryan took the extra mile and, and built a ray tracer, which is the high quality images you see in movies constantly in any animated movies. So what are we looking at here? This is a scene, I believe the book gave you the... Uh, so the scene gave the me the basic for code for creating the objects. I had to actually create the math that let me do uh, interactions with the objects though. So it wasn't, the, all the code wasn't given to me, but a lot of the, the basic idea for building these objects was. So what is the scene, scene showing us? In this scene, you're actually seeing refraction occurring, especially right here where the straw enters the glass. So what That's, is refraction? So refraction is how light bends when it enters objects of, or materials of different density. So for example, the light is, starts in air, which we has a different density than obviously water does. When, that, when the light goes into the water, the angle changes. And this is based off an index of refraction that all materials have. Cool. So we can see the refraction, obviously, from the top into the liquid there, and then some refraction on the side. Well, that shows some more uh, ray trace images you did yeah. with your... So that one's pretty cool. Let's look at another how, one. How long did it take for you to get to a point where you could re render that, that cup scene you just showed us? Oh, that actually took a long time. You had to get pretty far into a ray trace. The ray trace had to be near completion, especially for the refraction. It was one of the last things I actually implemented into the ray tracer. So weeks, months... Uh, we're talking months. Months? months to get Months to get that so far. So you started early on your capstone before the class actually started you, you got to work that's correct so i did start about i started about a month and a half before the actual capstone started and went from there and was starting my ray tracer back then and the ray tracer was one of the first things i finished for my capstone then i implemented the physics afterwards so now did the book give you the data for this scene or did you come up with this scene yourself uh it gave me the basic idea for the scene i then took that and made it my own by actually adding this glass ball the glass ball was not originally there it was actually a uh a reflective ball that didn't, in my opinion, look as nice. So what are we looking at here? Tell me about this scene. So in this scene, uh, we're actually looking at a glass ball sitting in the center of a room that has mirrors on some of the walls. The really cool aspect of this one, though, is how the light, when the rays, when we trace those rays, and when they hit this mirror, they actually bounce off and reflect across the room. Uh, when this actually happens, we can recurse upon those rays and eventually just create a hall of mirrors in this mirror, as you're seeing here, as it goes back and back and back. So since you have a mirror in the scene, the mirror reflects the mirror, which reflects the mirror, which reflects the mirror. Which, If, if I'm a computer science student that doesn't like recursion, <laughs> but I want to make a scene like this... Uh, you're going to be crying a little bit when you start to go at it. <laughs> I should probably get comfortable with recursion. Yeah. Okay, what other scenes do you have? Uh, okay, another one that I, one of my favorites is uh, this scene right here. Now, when you look at this scene, it looks very plain, basic. Let's zoom in a little bit. It looks like a very, compared to your other scenes, it's yeah. a very plain, basic scene. So why is this one of your favorite scenes? This is one of my favorite scenes because if you actually look under this ball, you can see some uh, shadows occurring. But the reason it's one of my favorites is there's no lights in this scene. There's no big, huge light bulb shining down on this ball. It, the lighting is actually all coming from light that's reflected off of other objects. But in math, we don't have other objects in the scene. As you can see, it's just the ball. So the math equations to actually creating these shadows is actually pretty complex, but it's really cool when you actually get down to it. So I remember when I was doing my first ray tracer, and I just got a red circle on the screen, and I was like, honey, it's a red circle. And she's like, I could create that in paint if I wanted to. And I was like, you don't know what it took to create this red circle. So that's essentially what you're yeah. saying here is this, it's a subtle effect, but it took a lot of math to, yeah. to make that happen. Uh, actually, you can actually see some of the, I think in this image you can see some of the artifacts of uh, some of the math that actually happens. See, this actually is one of the images that didn't come out properly. And this actually happened because of uh, the multi-threading I implemented, which again wasn't covered in the book. I implemented that on top, of my, on top of what was covered in the book. You can actually see some of those artifacts. When I'm doing sampling for the uh, ambient occlusion, this is actually called ambient occlusion, the, when mm -hmm. I'm creating the shadow. Mm -hmm. Some of the artifacts when I'm doing the sampling actually occur here and you can actually see that the color gets messed up at some points. This happens because the threads are using the same sampler, but when, uh, when I keep using the same sampler over and over again, it eventually leaves artifacts where it should have been creating shadows here, but the shadows end up here. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So how would you solve that problem? How could you would you have to ditch your threading or what? Uh, I can one, I can really quickly just ditch the threading, just take it down to one thread and then the image comes out perfectly. 
or two, I can actually create samplers, one for each thread, and then have, each thread has to manage its own sampler. I see. Um, so obviously you want to maintain the threading if we can. Yes. Cool. Any other scenes? Uh, let's, there's actually another really cool one right here. So let's zoom in on this again. On this scene, you're actually looking at a sphere. This is not, I mean, it is an ellipse. You can actually see the ellipse and you can see the, the specular highlighting here. The really cool part about this is the object I'm actually shooting rays at is a sphere. It's a perfect, it's a perfect sphere. It's not bent or scaled or rotated at all. It looks like a blimp. It does look like a blimp in this case. But the way I'm actually creating this blimp is by instead of uh, altering the actual shape of the sphere, I alter the rays. So the way the ray hits the sphere, I change that mm. to adjust it to create this image. So it's kind of like when I look in a funny mirror at a funny farm or whatever. Yeah, it's very similar to that. It's just bending the light crazy, but I'm actually not fatter or skinnier. Exactly. So you could make a ray traced image of me that's skinnier. If I wanted to, I could definitely do that. Well, how would you feel about graduating this week? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, cool. Good job.